So welcome guys, this is the last of the series and I really hope that you enjoy these videos. So the last part is, admittedly, is probably the most complicated part, but by far it's probably the most interesting part because this is where we begin to identify the relationship of two variables or the relationship of multiple variables against a dependent variable, right? And uh, this is where things get fun because it can be used for predictive purposes, right? And you can say, well, relationship, predictive, what do you mean? How, how do we even talk about these things? So I could come up with a very boring example and talk about, you know, interest rates and exchange rates. And I have done, already done that in the, in the lectures. But I just thought I'd talk about something else that's probably that's always on your mind and we're all young, well, at least I was young once, and we're probably, and you guys are probably at that stage, you guys and gals are probably at that stage where you're thinking about, you know, maybe having your first potential partner, and that, you know, you're trying, you're sort of agonizing over whether him or her will actually kind of, um, kind of accept you as a person. So again, we can kind of think about this in a very statistical way if you think about it, right? So to put it in a very simple way, you could have as your variable, okay, unsexy as that sounds, as the, how much the person likes you. You can kind of think of that as the amount of utility, okay? And on the dependent variable, you could have something like, for example, height, right? So that person could, be, could like a tall person or they could like a short person, right? So the question then becomes, well, if I'm taller, does that mean that that person will like me more? Of course, there's not much can do with your height, but that's one way to look at it. Think about, for example, your marks, right? There are some people that really, really like smart people, right? So what's that relationship? Is that a negative correlation or is that a positive correlation, right? So that's basically then the question, isn't it? Is it a positive or negative correlation? That is, should you be putting more effort into getting better marks to actually do better and then hence that person will like you more, right? So that's another way that you could kind of look at it. And what we're trying to do here, guys, is to basically say that, well, if, for example, your marks go up by one, one point, then this person will like you by this amount extra, right? As defined by whatever is written on that linear equation that you found. So you could then say, okay, that's kind of cool, but then that's only for one variable though, if you think about it. There, there has to be more than one reason why that person likes you. It can't be just because of your marks, right? It could be, for example, how much time you devote to, you know, keeping fit, for example, right? How much time you spend in the gym. It could be, for example, well, how much time do you actually spend in, uh, in the library? Maybe, maybe that person spends a lot of time in the library, right? So these are all certain things which you can then actually feed into your model, your model, <laughs> and identify how much you think that person kind of likes you, isn't it? So, but of course with that, always remember that there are some variables that are going to be correlated with each other. So this is why we talk about things such as the lurking variable problem and sort of be aware of things that may be driving all these other variables. So that's a problem because you can't then definitively say for example, that if I were to spend an extra hour in a library, that this person will like me more or he may dislike me more or she may dislike me more or he may dislike me more, right? It really, it really, you really can't tell. So that's where the problem then comes in, right? So that person becomes, it, the model itself becomes a bit of a problem. So this is why we talk about things such as getting a clean, clean relationship across all of these different variables. But on a slightly different note, right, um, you can kind of begin to appreciate that what we're doing with these variables is trying to predict something, right? 
And on a more sort of grand scale, this is what policy makers are interested in, right? Is there a relationship, like for example, when we're investing more money into the health system, how much improvement is there in health outcomes, right? This is what we're interested in. This is real life, guys, right? So it's always about the population. Just like in your case, you're trying to predict the population. That is how much that person actually likes you, right? You're not, in, you're not interested in the sample. You're interested in the population. And this is why the last bit of this course is by far the most interesting. And I know it's by far the most complex, but I, 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 I guarantee you, it's also by far the most rewarding if you understand it well especially when you move into the workforce. Um, I really, really hope that you learn this stuff well because there's so many different fun stuff that you can do with it. So this kind of concludes the series and I really hope that you enjoy this course and uh, hopefully I see you around campus. So take care.